I mean, what I love about the South is this is the same thing that I that I loved <laughs> from the very beginning, from the first time I traveled down the Mississippi, is this open spirit. Um, it's just easier working in the South. It's just like I, everything is a little bit more open and accessible. For me, the South has always been both a mythic place and a tragic place. The tension between the violent history and the beautiful landscape. Because it's a really beautiful place. And it is a beautiful place where at one time there was very little that could be called beautiful about it. Certainly in the social sense, I'm from California, and um, one of the things that happened for this project, I mean, I had worked in Louisiana before. I had been traveling in my Volkswagen camper for many years, wandering different areas, going cross country, photographing, that kind of thing. So um, I had been to the South before, but what was really interesting when I did this project in 1998, the concept from the museum was picturing the South. And that really was the only framework, there was no there was no limitations, there was no restrictions, there was no guidance. It was just like, you know, come in fresh, do a, something that relates to picturing the South. And it was kind of exciting. We have this big idea of what the South is. And I went, you know, I'm going to just kind of go in open-minded. And what I decided to do is I flew to New York, I rented a car, and basically I flew to the North, I rented a car and decided to drive towards the South and see if I could figure out where the South actually begins. Over the years, I have photographed um, in the South on many occasions. What really stands out for me as a photographer is how so much happens outdoors um, because of the weather, because of the um, conditions. So much of the unfolding of life does happen outdoors, which makes it so much more interesting for me to photograph because I, I consider myself a, a kind of landscape photographer. I had never really photographed in the South um, you know, before, and but I, I did know that I was particularly interested in the vegetation and the landscape itself because I, I wanted to concentrate on maybe something not overtly political or social, but the fauna and you know flora of, of the place. I'm a big fan of Eudora Welty and uh, Fanner O'Connor and people like that who, whose writings are very much akin to, in some ways, what in Latin America has been called magic realism. So I did have a feeling that uh, the South would, would provide me with a certain kind of just sexiness, you know, that here in Boston we don't get. Uh, so I look forward to that. Instead of going back to my roots, I grew up in Cuba where, where the vegetation and the s social scene it was not unlike the South. Having grown up in uh, Vermont and spending all my life in New England, my relationship to the American South was pretty limited. Uh, but my interest in the South grew through my interest in most notably probably film uh, music and certainly the history of photography. So One Sun, One Shadow is a project that came about as a result of the commission uh, with the High Museum and it's really uh, about the relationship between music and landscape. I was very interested in the ways in which music comes from place uh, as well as uh, you know vice versa, how our understanding of place can be informed by the songs that come from it. I, I did fall in love with a lot of the places I spent time in and, you know, wanted to come back and didn't want to stop traveling and, uh, you know, I think being able to form a kind of a personal bond with a place that, you know, maybe isn't as closely connected to like your upbringing or your roots is, is always a really wonderful experience. So. On a personal level, I think I just, uh, you know, broadened my understanding of, of the fabric of this country in a nice way. 
The airport is just a good venue for human drama. You know, there's all kinds of theater that you see there. The idea of being on a journey is interesting to me and, and maybe the more introspective moments of contemplating this, this journey. I think it does come from a, a long-term interest of mine of photographing people along the road. You know, if there's somebody by the road, it's like the road behind them is their life before them and ahead of them is where they're going. And, the airport too seems like this point where they're, you know, leaving maybe one chapter of their life and going to another. I produced a series of impressions of, of Atlanta. Uh, I, want, I started out in the downtown walking and this is something I sort of often do approaching a city for the first time. And as I work deeper into the project, particularly with an American city, because American cities often are car-oriented, I start to expand and go out into the, the surrounding areas. Well, it was one of the first major southern cities that I've spent time with, and it did give me a visual sense at the time, I think, what people were then beginning to call the New South, a kind of more vibrant and international city. Um, I'm not even sure I've ever been much to the South uh, before I actually came to Atlanta to start the shooting for the uh, High Museum. When I was offered this um, job to come to Atlanta, I couldn't say yes fast enough because the idea of actually being paid to come and explore an, an interesting city or state like uh, Atlanta and Georgia was this fantastic opportunity and I, I, I loved every moment I was there. You know, these big cities like uh, Chicago, New York, they're, they're much more organized. You know, it's more wayward in the South. It's, it's, more, it's quirkier, more interesting. I think it's almost preferable uh, to photograph, if you like, because there's so many layers that you can explore. I mean, I was there two times for um, like 10 days or something. I could have done 10 times, times 30 days very easily and still not have even started or hardly scratched the surface. I mean, there's so much going on. Well, being in the South definitely affects my uh, photography in actually every possible way. I was, I was lucky to grow up in a very rich environment around very rich people, not financially rich, but uh, people that were great storytellers, I think my, my photographs, particularly the last year that I photographed on the, the, the commission from the museum, are a document of the time. You know, when I got the commission, it was so open-ended that I really didn't know uh, what to do. It was um, a kind of a sanction to photograph anything in the South. I've always needed an assignment whether it's a self-assignment or an assignment from someone else. And what the high provided me was a frame. The frame was the South, and I had to narrow that frame. And the irony for me is that I've discovered over the years, the more that I narrow the frame, the, in a sense, the more I can do, that I'm free to do anything within a narrow frame. I have almost no recollection of how it came about, except that I know I said no um, a bunch of times because it's referenced in that, in that letter I wrote them, uh, because I don't work well under pressure. Uh, and then I, I had this idea that maybe what I should do is take this opportunity to do, you know, to pivot and do some completely new um, and different and uh, more challenging work, which is not at all what a curator wants to hear. I mean, they choose you for a reason. They choose you for a certain style of work or a certain body of work, and they probably, Ellen was not excited about the idea that I'm headed down there with film I've never used before in my life and no concept whatsoever of what I was going to do. I remember coming back and being really excited about this work. I, I saw a possibility, and I didn't quite know how to get to the next step, but that's, to me, that's that's the excitement of being an artist, is figuring process out. I like, I like figuring out how to um, enliven my vision and bring it, bring it to life. One of the really precious discoveries of doing this project for the High Museum 
getting in an airplane in the South. When by that time, by 2001, I actually had given up aerial photography. I thought I'd, I'd had a fabulous, from 1980 to 2001, 20 years of aerial, aerial photography. I thought, well, I, I probably have said what I need to say. Once I discovered there were literally a hundred mills in the South, I say literally, I don't know, but there's a thing about this thick, which is the uh, guide to paper and pulp industry in the United States. And with it, you get great information about how many millions of gallons of water are used every year or every day. I mean, Ashdown, when I went there, that yearly report recorded the use of 105 million gallons of water a day. I got an assignment to go to Louisiana to cover Hurricane Katrina for a Dutch magazine. And then um, I wanted to find these relatives of mine that I had always heard about who lived in the bayou on the coast of Louisiana. And I took like a half day out to try to locate one of them. And I found my great uncle who said, hey, do you want to go see where the Indians live, the Indian village? And I said, yeah, let's go. And these are insular kind of little communities. No one cared that I was related to them in the ways that I explained I was. A couple of people were like, oh, Rosalie Couteau, she was our ancestor, you know, let me show you the people who are also related to her. And I met a few people that way. But for the most part, um, they were just tired of journalists. They were tired of being reported on and nothing changed. And this community has faced discrimination at the federal and local levels. And then now they're just losing their homes because of these repeated storms and the, the coastal erosion, the loss of their land. Um, they just been disappointed so many times and were so disillusioned by outsiders. I felt like I was just another one of those people coming through for a long time. Until um, at one point I remember telling people, trying to explain the project, and I couldn't say I was a journalist doing this as a journalist anymore, that this was for a museum. And then they got interested. They're like, what do you mean a museum? So well, this is going to be in a permanent archive in the, muse the High Museum of Art in Atlanta, and there will be an exhibition and a book. And then they're like, oh, well, that sounds important. That's valuable. And they wanted, that, that really was, it, it kind of opened doors in a way I didn't expect. It was, it was um, kind of moving that they appreciated the value of that. These people who many of them, I think, had never been to a museum. They knew that their story was important and that that had a different kind of value, documenting in that long, slow way. This body of work is very personal to me than any other body of work that I've ever done. And it's that way because of my parents. My parents are no longer here. Both of my parents um, have transitioned. And I think about them a lot. I think about John Lewis a lot. I think about that generation where they were the ones that fought for the civil rights, for human rights for us, and we still experience the same thing. And so with Stone Mountain, that mountain is so, is very iconic with the symbolism of white supremacy. And I wanted to take a look at that through the landscape and talk about it through the landscape. For I want to engage the viewer to see how beautiful this park is, but also, how it's rooted in the symbolism of the Confederacy, and how maybe I, as an artist, can open up a door, which I call a brave space, where we can all come together and talk about this. It'll be one step to do this. I, I had biased ideas growing up about the South. You know, being a, a northerner, in a city, you know, of New Haven, which was struggling with civil rights issues, you know, I had a a real strong sense of uh, of, of social justice issue. It was in my mindset to, to think about these things. I, of course, I was in a way biased about the South and thinking about the civil rights era. That already kind of biased me as the South as being this place of this place that never really recovered well from the Civil War, or never really resolved itself from the Civil War. Um, but that was a bias, I mean, you know, that was not necessarily based on reality. And, 
and not based it, you know, on my own reality of looking in the mirror and seeing, you know, that that what I what I thought of what I put upon as the South as as being particularly the South is really where I lived and and where I live now. That issues of race and inequality and is manifest everywhere in the States right now. That is really the ultimate reason to do any work, is to educate both your mind and your feelings to what is yet not understood, less than fully comprehended, to experience life as the, the edge of discovery. And there's pleasure involved in the South. Life is not about, you know, bearing it all, but enjoying it all.